It's going to be a quick demonstration of the builder's automation five axis CNC stair routing machine. Uh, builder's automation has been building stair machines and servicing stair machines for over 30 years. Uh, this is one of many of the machines we build. Um, I'd like to just uh, take a quick minute and show you some of the features of this machine. It has two seven horsepower motors. It has over 3,200 pounds of clamping pressure, and it is a true five axis electromechanical machine. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate how the operator would input stairs. So this is the home screen, a uh, quick rundown on this. This has a counter on it. It'll give you your daily count of stringers, or excuse me, um, repeat cuts that you've done. That would be your tread rise combination. Also has a, a counter which gives you the total number of cuts the machine has ever run. Uh, this is a great feature to m monitor the tool life and uh, change it as such and get it resharpened and other maintenance that may need to be done to the machine. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump into stair profiles. Um, first of all, you've got your box stairs. Uh, box stairs, simply enough, you change the tread and the rise, uh, the board thickness, the board width. Um, also, this machine is unique in the fact that it can do the landing cuts and the operator can program the landing cuts from the touchscreen. Uh, simply enough, just enter the offsets that you want, for example, for the bottom landing. If you were doing a staircase and your ched material was, let's say, one and a half inch thick, you would do your first riser one and a half less, so once you put the tread on it, from the top of the tread to the floor would equal the same as all the other treads. Uh, we'll jump into the next one. Simple enough, it's a kickback riser. Uh, just sets the riser back a little bit so that there's a little more toe space. Uh, this can be adjusted simply by entering the value that you want to set the kickback to and the machine does all the work for you. Um, you can set up again your landings and your landing will also have the kickback on the riser but be straight on the back to mount it. Okay, now we'll jump into your 45 degree. 45 degree is for doing uh, Return cuts uh, gives your riser the uh, um, ability to mount it and not show end grain. Um, everything is qualified from the bed. Uh, this gives the cutter uh, the ability to give you repeatability every time you cut so you get that nice sharp uh, knife's edge on the bottom of your 45. These two give you uh, landing cuts and yes the landing cut will have a 45 cut on the riser that way your first riser is also a riser with the ability to mount it so that you can't see the end grain <coughs> um, okay uh, contemporary stair this is a real nice one you can turn on your tread so it you turn the tread on so you can have a round nose or or the typical point to point which gives you the flat butt nose and of course you get the radius of the tool you can do your through route um, and what's really nice is you can do your centering the machine will determine the length of the tread by what the operator has set and then center that in whatever board the operator set so there's no need to do the math and figure out where on the board you want it from the edge to to give you a centered tread. Uh, it's all done from the machine. And of course this can be turned off if you want to dictate where you want the tread. Here also you have the uh, luxury of running your landing cuts and you can set the, the geometry for that. Uh, another type of contemporary stair. Um, obviously you're not going to do through route on this. It too has the ability to route the nose. And last but not least, the box stair. Uh, this machine is really designed around doing high production box stairs at a very accurate level. Um, <clears throat> uh, everything here is pretty straightforward. You obviously put in your tread, your rise, your board width, your, and so on, it's all there. 
You can also set your, your landing cuts here also relative to the face of the riser, relative to the top of the tread, and the geometry on the top, again, same thing. Um, so extremely simple how to set up what type of stairs you want to run. This is, uh, again, this is to set the machine up. Obviously, you can't cut any of your stringers if you don't have the machine knowing what type of tooling it is. That can be quite complicated on some machines, but not on this machine. Extremely simple. Um, the very first one is a tool diameter. If you notice, I have 0.85. Uh, this was a 7 8 cutter, but it has been resharpened. And I figured it'd be nice to show you how to simply change that. So this was a 7 8 cutter. Um, it's been resharpened, so it's slightly smaller. So I just enter in the actual dimension in which it cuts. Uh, the second one um, is the amount of tool that is ex exposed from the bottom of the collet. Um, the machine needs to know that so when it makes its cut it does the correct depth because this is electromechanical as far as the depth of cut is concerned. It is a true five axis machine. There's no adjusting stops and bolts and whatnot to try to get the right depth. This is done from the touchscreen extremely accurately. So you put the tool in, measure it, and enter the measurement onto the screen as far as what the tool length is and the machine does all the work for you. Um, RPM can be changed from here so if you have a tool that doesn't have the ability to run at what we're running right now you simply modify that to whatever your your tool is capable of doing. <clears throat> in here is your maintenance. Uh, maintenance has one nice little feature and that's why I'm coming into here. Um, you can change the direction of your tool. Uh, so we are running currently the bottom tool uh, counterclockwise. Uh, we're doing this because when the tool punches out of the stringer, it has the tendency of giving you breakout. Um, with the counter rotating, or excuse me, the, the counterclockwise cutter, that's not the case. You get a nice crisp cut on the back. Um, you can also, from here, monitor the amps that the spindles are drawing. Um, this gives you the insight of knowing how well your tool is performing. So if the tool starts to wear out, starts to erode, you can determine here that it needs to be changed or resharpened or, or whatnot. <clears throat> um, inserts change, whatever, whatever you desire. And of course you can also monitor the amp draw of the servo motor, something I believe to be quite unique to our machine. Again, another tool that lets you um, understand if the tool is starting to get dull or perhaps the material is denser than what you expected and you may need a new tool for it. So great feature there. Uh, the rest of the stuff is, is real simple. It's basically you're like for here is the monitoring the machine status. So it lets us know if, if everything's a-okay. The key switch goes red because I'm not, it's spring return. So <clears throat> it lets you know that it's actually working and air pressure is correct and so on. Um, alarms, if something were to go wrong, that screen would show you what has gone wrong. It's great diagnostics. And then uh, G-code. So the G-code, <clears throat> this one here, can be a little intimidating looking at it, but please understand this is not something you would ever even have to go into. This is uh, really for the, client who'd want to use the stair machine outside of its of of its original design of doing stairs and potentially use it for doing something that they have come up with some new product they want to run in here you can program the machine to do just about anything that fits inside that window <clears throat> inside its cutting area but for just doing stairs, it's not needed. Uh, everything is done through the parametric, through the uh, programming ability of the touchscreen. Okay, so with that said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a box stair. We're going to go ahead and do, uh, we'll do three repeats. No, we'll leave it at two because it'll go a little quicker. And I'd like to run the stairs, and as soon as this is done, without cutting the, the recording, we're going to go right into, right into a uh, open stair, just to show how this machine does not require any adjustments to go from one type of stair to the other, as far as physical, mechanical adjustments. Um, one more thing on here, this machine has dust collection. 
Dust collection is extremely efficient, especially for small particulates that tend to come off the cutter as it's going, that get airborne. The machine itself is fully enclosed, uh, keeps it the operator out of harm's way. Um, if the door is open while it's operating, the machine will shut down, but it will not unclamp. And if the door is closed again and they press the start button, it'll pick up where it was left off. So if the door is opened improperly, you don't lose your product. The product is still a viable product because it hasn't lost its place. I think that's very important, uh, especially if the operator has opened it for a reason that wasn't necessary. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and press the start button. And when I do so, it's going to clamp up and it's going to get a little noisy and I'll, I'll let you watch it. And then when it's done, we'll do the open. So here we go. I'm pressing the start button. Okay, so without missing a beat here, I'm gonna go ahead and take this uh, small little staircase out. And just gonna pull this board ahead a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and without changing any tooling or making any mechanical adjustments. I'm going to go right into, stu into stair profiles. We're going to pick a, um, an open stair. Uh, we'll do three repeats. Save it. And we're going to run it. Here we go.
Okay. So there you have a perfectly cut within uh, 15, 10 to 15 thousandths repeatability because it's wood, obviously. Uh, open stair, uh, did not have to use a wrench, did not have to make any adjustments to any kind of knobs, didn't have to change tooling to go from one type of stair to the other. Um, one piece of information, this, like I said earlier, is a piece of inch and a half by um, nine and a quarter board. Uh, feed rate could be sped up a little bit um, on this product. It, again, these are resharpened tools. If uh, you did something thinner, uh, the speed, the feed rate could be substantially higher. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call us at Builders Automation. Thank you very much.